Okay, welcome to this knowledge session on the quantum fundamentals. And please pay attention. And I'm sure that at by the end of this session, you will have a solid grasp of this uh, about the quantum fundamentals, right? Okay, so these are some knowledge etiquettes that we have to follow. Like first one is punctuality. So uh, join the session five minutes prior to the session start time. We conclude on on the time and, and we start on the time as well. Make sure to submit a constructive feedback for all the sessions as it is very helpful for the presenter. Like if you have any concern, suggestion about the session, you can submit in that the feedbacks, right? Keep yourself uh, and your mobile devices in the silent mode and feel free to move out, move out of the session in case you have an urgent call, right? And please avoid unmuted chit chat during the sessions. Uh, Okay, unclean or unless you have any questions. Right. So these are the agendas for today's session. Uh, first, we will see introduction to Kotlin, why we use Kotlin, uh, its uh, use cases. Then we will see the basic syntax about Kotlin, uh, control flow, groups, functions, null safety, collections. And in the last, we will see interface and uh, inheritance, right? And I hope most of you all uh, no java so uh, it will be very easy to understand okay so let's see so first we will start with the introduction to kotlin so kotlin is a modern statistical type uh, programming language that is designed to be concise expressive and safe it was first released in 2011 by uh, jet brains it is an object oriented programming language it supports function programming paradigm which making it is a versatile language for a wide range of applications. So it is designed in such a way that it, uh, it, is, comp is, it is compatible with a JVM, which means that Kotlin can be compiled to bytecodes just like the Java, okay? and uh, then it can be executed on any device or platform that uh, which supports JVM. So why we use Kotlin? So it is uh, fully compatible with the Java, and it also works on the different platforms, either uh, Windows, Linux, Mac, etc. It's a concise and safe. It is very easy to learn, and especially if you already know uh, Java, so it will be very easy. Right? And it is free to use. And it has a big community to support. Right? And if, if you talk about the use cases of the uh, Kotlin, like Kotlin, like in in which cases we can use Kotlin. So uh, I guess hope you all are aware that uh, Google has officially announced that Kotlin is used for the mobile development devices, right? Mm -hmm. Mobile development applications. So uh, either it is backend or mobile application development. So Kotlin is uh, playing a big role. So let's see some basic syntax about the Kotlin. So in Kotlin, we have two keywords, well and char. So well keyword is used to declare an immutable variables. Immutable means which cannot be changed. So if we have assigned a value to a variable and it is a well type, so it value cannot be changed after we have assigned some value to it, right? As you can see here, I have assigned the name. Uh, I have. Uh, of well type and it is data its data type is history and I have passed harsh value. So if in the code, if I try to change its value, so it will not uh, change. It will show uh, error that you have to change to to where in case if you want to change its value. So similarly, where keyword is used to declare the mutable variables. Okay, which means we can change its value after the initialization. Type interface. It is the ability of a Kotlin compiler to automatically detect the data type of a variable or expression based on its initialization value. So if you if you carefully see here, I have assigned uh, 24 to this age, but here I have not given its uh, I have not uh, provided its data type. Like if you see here, I have I'm using int type, and here I'm not using any data type. But Kotlin compiler will automatically detect. Okay, it is a of type integer, so uh, it will work properly without any error. 
how we can write the first program like uh, in college time if you try if you learn something any program any new program language the first code that you write is hello world so first we will uh, here we will also see how we can write uh, our first program in kotlin in the demo part okay. so control flow control flow structure allows us to manage the flow of execution in our code they include conditional and conditional and loops which makes us make uh, which help us make decision and repeat repeat action based on some uh, specific conditions okay so if else loops these all are same as we have in c++ or in any other programming language either java Okay, so uh, condition, uh, condition control flow are same as we have in other programming languages, but here is one uh, big change that we have in Kotlin. It supports when expression. Like uh, in Java, we have switch case. So here, instead of switch, we have when case, right? Uh, when statement. So which is more powerful replacement for the traditional switch statement. And it works exactly same as the switch statement works. Okay, break and continue. You all are aware like break is used to exit a loop, and while uh, and the continue is used to skip uh, some particular iteration and move to the next one. Okay. Then we have loops. So uh, okay, we have different types of loops. Uh, available in the Kotlin for loop, while, do while, and we have ranges and progressions. So for loop is exactly same that we have in Java, C++, but syntax, uh, but in the Kotlin, we have some different syntax for that. Okay, we don't type like for i equals to zero, i from zero to n, we don't type like that. If you are aware about the basics of Python, just similar kind of for loops we use in the Kotlin. Okay, so for loop can be used to iterate over a range of values, array collections, or anything that provides an iteration. While loop is used to, uh, uh, if we want to some want to repeat some code snippet, uh, as long as our condition is true. So in that case, we can use while loop. Do while loop is exactly similar to while loop while loop but in the do while loop at least one our code will execute before checking the condition okay in ranges so in ranges it allows us to uh, iterate over sequence of values suppose if you want to uh, iterate from 1 to 10 then you can provide ranges like 1 dot dot 10 so Kotlin compiler will understand that okay, you have given a range from one to ten. That in that case, uh, in that particular value, uh, code work. Okay, we have progression. <clears throat> Progressions is uh, we can say a extent of the range value, but in the progression we have a new thing that is called step. Okay, suppose if you want to uh, skip some uh, particular values okay suppose if you want to skip even numbers in the uh, 1 to 10 so in that case you can use progressions okay functions you all know that what are functions like if we uh, suppose we have a particular some uh, code snippet and we want to use that code in different different location uh, in different different classes or uh, 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 if we can see class, uh, code, class or any other function. So for that, we can use uh, functions. So how we write functions for that, we have uh, this fun keyword, then name of the function, then we can uh, give its parameters if we have any. Okay, then we use this colon sign. Okay, then it's return type. Then in the parenthesis, we 
to have our uh, uh, logic implemented. Okay, so that's how we can define a function in Kotlin. Calling a function means uh, suppose now we have created this demo function. Now we want to use this demo in some class or in inside some other function. Okay, so similarly we can uh, call the functions right lambda function is same uh, as we have in the java so these are these are anonymous functions which can be uh, passed in argument to other functions but here in the kotlin some uh, syntax may be changed so we will also see that in the demo part okay higher order functions so Kotlin allows us to define higher order functions, which are the functions that accepted other function as argument or return functions. As you can see here, we have a function of named operate. Okay, and inside that we have x of type in, y of type in, and in the operation uh, we are doing something. Okay, and inside that which and and it its return type is also integer and which returns some function right so uh, uh, here you can see i have uh, used i'm using this function operate and i'm passing the values 10 and 5 okay and if you see like inside the operation i'm passing values like 10 uh, 10 and 5 here will come and inside that what we will do it will do some logic okay now it's depend upon us like either we want to addition or either we want subtraction multiplication division so on that on that implementation our code uh, i mean our function will work okay so null safety Kotlin null safety is a processor to eliminate the risk of null references from the code okay Kotlin compiler knows null pointer exception immediately if it forms any null argument pass is passed without executing any other statement okay so uh, how we can uh, remove or uh, null pointers we will see like nullable types so in Kotlin we need to explicitly indicate whether a variable can hold a null value or not so for that if we can use this question mark okay it is called safe call safe call operator so uh, uh, i have defined a variable name variable named name and it is of nullable type which means name either can be named an empty or a non empty value okay so okay and next is safe call to safely accept access the properties or call methods on nullable objects we can use the safe call operator right this operator checks if the object is null before performing the operation and null returns null if the object is null so what will it do it will first check either this uh, the well uh, either the this object is null or not if it is uh, null then it will throw uh, the null pointer exception instead of the instead of the writing the uh, i mean instead of executing the whole code it will uh, firstly detect either it is null or not okay next one is the elvis operator elvis operator is question mark and this uh, colon okay so it provides a concise way to handle null values by providing a default values if the expression on the left is null so suppose if the value is null and instead of the null we want some specific value right uh, suppose if the name is null and i don't want to print the uh, length null or zero so for that we can give some default value okay so suppose if the name is uh, i'm not giving any name and i'm just press the enter button okay so uh, it will uh, tell according to this line it will tell the name length is zero okay
safe cast safe cast operators allows us to cast an object to an specific type and returns null if the cast is not possible okay so here you can see i'm uh, uh, using a variable uh, number of type 12 and uh, here i'm giving a value of integer type oh, sorry a uh, string type right and i want to change its value to a integer value okay now if the uh, cast is successful okay so it will uh, so it will not throw in any kind of error and uh, if somehow cast fails then it will show uh, an error like a uh, cast failed or something uh, exception will then okay not null assertion operator so this is our not null assertion operator which is used to convert a nullable type to a non nullable type value and however if the value is null a null pointer exception will throw okay smart cast so smart cast automatically cast a variable to a non nullable type when the null check is performed so what it will do first it will uh, check a null type okay suppose if the name is not null only then this uh, this line will execute okay so from this we can uh, save our some time of i mean we can save our some run time uh, to detect the kernel uh, pointer exception okay now we have collections so as we already know in java we have collection framework so similarly in the kotlin as well we have these things okay so collections are used to store manipulate the group of data or objects so uh, we have some several types of collections that are available in kotlin like list set map and array so uh, and collections are basically categorized into two types mutable and immutable mutable means which can be modified and immutable means which cannot be modified okay uh you are uh, hope you all are aware about the properties of the these collections list set map so list ordered uh, is uh, ordered collection of elements which allows duplicates and set doesn't allow duplicates so it uh, only allows unique elements okay map map is a collection of key value pairs where each key is unique okay array is uh, you know this size collection of element with some specific type inheritance and interfaces these are the fundamental concepts in the op object oriented programming language which kotlin supports like uh, inheritance allows us to create a new class based on an existing class okay? uh, by inheriting its properties and behavior so the new class is called subclass or the derived class so and, and in kotlin we use the colon symbol to do, to denote the inheritance and interface you all know like interface works exactly same uh, that works in the java which means they can contain methods implementation as well as the abstract method declarations right and uh, an interface can be implemented by a class in order to use its defined uh, functionality so directly we will move to the demo part so how you can uh, set up a first kotlin project first we will see that okay so new project now just choose your language okay so new uh, demo you can choose the jdk okay so as of now i am using open jdk 19 so let's see so it is not as uh, it is not as hard okay so it is very easy to uh, create a project in kotlin so you will see 
you can see uh, in the form file also right plugins already uh, came of the kotlin and uh, yes by default uh, uh, dependencies are also here so This is the very first program uh, that we write in any blank, any program language that is hello world. Okay. So I have already told uh, to define any function. We use the fun keyword and main is the main and you can say the entry point for the Kotlin uh, to run uh, to run any code. Okay, so if you run this. So we we'll successfully print hello world. Okay. Just move to the basic syntax now. Okay. So uh, I have defined a variable uh, name of type val and its values hers and its data type is history. So as I already told that val is immutable, so its value cannot be changed. OK, so let's see this thing. Okay. Now if I try to change its value. Post and uh, now um, I want to give its value to. Uh, uh, so we will see an a uh, red line has been occurred in the name, which means well cannot be reassigned. So if we have to change to its, uh, if you have to change its uh, well type to where type, okay. Any question till now? Anyone? No. Okay. So uh, now uh, we have next variable that is age. Okay. So age type is var, which means it is mutable. So here you can see I have given it uh, uh, 24 to its value. Now I'm changing its value to 25. So without any error, it is successfully uh, able to change the value. And it is also printing 25. Just So that's how we can define variables and data types in the Kotlin. Okay. Now we will see how we can give the comments in the Kotlin. So it is exactly same as in the Java. So you can use the double slash for a single line command and uh, uh, backward slash asterisk for multiple line commands. Okay. So this is also basic. Yeah. Now we will see type inferences right so it is the ability of a Kotlin compiler to automatically detect the data type right now carefully see I'm not uh, I'm not providing any data type here so but if you hold over the message it will show it is of a string type which means Kotlin compiler is detecting its uh, data type okay and if you want to see its data type, you can use this message colon colon class dot simple name. So let's see. So message has a type of string, which means it is of a string type. OK, now if you if you want to change its value, suppose 55. Now it is a should be of integer type, right? Let's see. 
so it is successfully saying that uh, it is of type int now uh, move to the control flow so uh, first we will see if else loops how we use in the uh, kotlin so i am declaring a variable score and uh, giving a value of 85 to score right now here is the logic for uh, uh, if statement and this is the logic for else if statement and this is for else statement so it is exactly same as if we have in c plus plus c java or any other language right so let's run this So it is spreading good job because our value is 85 and it is it lies in this condition, right? So this is all. Yeah, so that is the new thing that we have in Kotlin. pan statement right so uh, it how we can use this so uh, you you just have to type this van keyword and inside that you can use the that particular thing that through which you want to execute that uh, code snippet okay so i i am using day variable and its value is 3 means uh, which means for the case three, it should print Wednesday, right? So let's see either it is printing or not. Wednesday, right? So it is successfully showing uh, our message that we want to do. Instead of simple message, you can do any kind of uh, logic implementation uh, based on your need, right? So let's see a uh, for loop. Yeah, so I was telling about the ranges, right? So how you can uh, like in Java, what we do, like we do like this, like uh, int i equals to zero, right? We do something like this, right? But here, what I'm doing, I'm just doing for loop i in now i have to give in a range i have to type a range so how i can do that i simply just give the starting value of the range then two dots okay then the ending value of the range so it will automatically show these type of uh, operators right so now in that for for loop you can do your uh, logic implementation right so uh, here I'm printing uh, numbers. So let's see. So it is printing from one to five, right? In according to the range that I have provided. Right? So I, now I have a. Uh, this is the list of integers, right? And I'm iterating uh, throughout this whole list, right? So, mm, and this is while loop, right? So, it is also similar to the Java. So, just run the code. So, it is uh, executing successfully without any. Uh, error. So just uh, now see what I was showing. So uh, 
in that do while loop but we have uh, in that do while at least for one our code will execute so first this will uh, this line will execute after that after performing the uh, this thing it will check the condition so which means for the at least one time our uh, do condition will run okay so run this right is printing the values in the do while loop as well without any error So uh, now let's see break and continue. So uh, I have a for loop from one to ten, and I'm checking if I push to push to five, then it will exit the loop, right? So means when the i value reaches five, it will exit uh, exit from the loop, and point uh, in the continue, which means. Uh, it will skip the even numbers right let's see right numbers in the continuous 13579 which means it is skipping the even numbers right and uh, in the break once the i value matches so it will break the uh, loop So uh, collect, let's see about the collections. Right? So as I told, we have uh, mutable and immutable collections, right? So for the immutable, we don't have anything, uh, any such key, any as such keyword like uh, it is immutable. We have just normal keywords like list of. And, but for the mutable things, we have a particular keyword mutable, which uh, then uh, we can uh, choose either it is for, I, I mean, either we are using for the set, map, or list. According to that, we can use. But for the immutable, we have normal things, right? Like list of, set of, map of. Okay. So let's see. So immutable, first we have a uh, immutable list of integers, right? If I try to, uh, use this, we don't have any add keyword, right? But here you can see in the, uh, mutable list, we have add keyword, right? Which means we can modify the list after it has been created. Right. Similarly, we have for the cat, uh, sorry, set, and uh, similarly, we have for the map. Okay, so run the code. Don't this. See. Okay, uh, mutable list is red, green, blue. And the modified list is red, purple. Uh, we have modified the green value purple. It's, it shows it has been modified. So it is of mutable type, right? So any uh, doubt till now? Okay. I will take it as unknown. Now let's see interface and so uh, how you define the interface in Java, right? It is exactly same. Like right? you have to use the keyword interface. Wait, I will just show you for two class and you can use here. Okay, so uh, hello. So now uh, 
interface of color has been created. So you can provide methods inside that. Okay. So here I have a shape interface which have two keywords cal which calculates the area and the parameters and it is of double type which means uh, its return type is double. Okay, so let's see uh, its implementation. So I have a class with name circle which have a parameter of type double radius, right? And it's uh, I'm implementing the inter shape interface. So for that, I'm using colon keyword, right? So if you don't, uh, I commented both the uh, functions. Now it will, and it is showing an error that you have to implement the method and the functions, right? So okay. So now here you can type your logic, right? Return by Similarly, you can uh, modify your functions or uh, interface according to your need. So uh, we have another class rectangular which have two parameters length of which are of which uh, are of double type. Okay, and it is also implementing interface shape interface and uh, here in the main function, um, yeah, that's how uh, we use the uh, we create an object in the uh, Kotlin. Like you have to just give provide the name of the object of any class, like circle two. Okay, and uh, this is the That's how you can uh, create and use the object in Kotlin of any class. Right? So just run the main function. So it is successfully working, right? Yes. So first uh, run this function, then I will explain this. Okay. So I'm not passing any value. Yeah. So uh, red read line is used to take the input from the user in Kotlin. Okay, so uh, I, here I have to provide my name, but instead of uh, giving my name, I just put it as null. So it will throw a null pointer exception. Right. So by it is showing, let's see. So this thing is showing uh, the null pointer exception like uh, if you go to here um, okay. so yeah. how uh, it is showing a uh, null pointer exception we are just using a null not null assertion operator Okay, so similarly here I'm also using a not null assertion operator to detect if it throws any exception or not. So, uh, okay, so it is showing because of that it is showing me a null pointer exception, right? And here, here, uh, that's how you can use the safe call operation uh, operator in the Kotlin. Okay, you have just to provide the question mark 
uh, before using uh, uh, before the length uh, function of the any integer of sorry uh, of any string type. Okay. So yes, save cast. So uh, that's how uh, you are. Uh, you can use the save card safe cast uh, function or operator like uh, you have to give as and question mark okay so which means number uh, i mean this keyword uh, this variable can be changed to integer or not so um, here i am giving its type integer so run this and let's see So yeah, so length. So I have okay. So first I have given in the name and its name length. That's how you can calculate the uh, length of any string value. It is same as we have in the Java, right? And uh, Message. So from here, it is printing the name length, right? Of the name that I have used. So this uh, has been also provided. If anyone uh, I have done from my side. If anyone have any question, uh, you guys, you guys can ask. Okay. 